just the other day and it was said something about Ralph Waldo Emerson saying if you come to a path don't take the path you know make a path that was sort of my nature in the first place you know when I was a little kid if they said uh, oh buy this suit because everybody's wearing it I was like oh, you just lost to Salem yeah. that was the one thing don't say that everybody's wearing it because I don't want to wear it and that be being my nature I suppose it was just always I was interested in more things, you know. My name is Jeff Slatnick, and I'm the owner of the Music Inn, and the store has been here a long time, and I've been here a long time. But I didn't start the store. The store was started uh, in 1958 by a guy named Jerry Halpern, and uh, I came here, I guess, first in about 1966 or something, not even earlier, maybe, yeah, maybe early 60s something, 65, 66, and I worked for a little while here, and then I went away and went to California, and then I came back in 1976, and I've been here ever since. When the store first opened in 1958, the very first thing it was was just a record store. All these bins here, like these bins were filled with records, and they go all the way around the store, and it was a very cool record store. From what I gather about in 1959, people came in and said, oh man, can I sell you my guitar and stuff like that. So they got into selling guitars and by 1960, they were really full swing with guitars. It was something that was really happening. All the store from the whole back was full. There must have been about 2,000 or more guitars in here. And we became a dealer of Martin and Gibson and Fender and Ovation and all these guitars. But then, uh, Guitars got less interesting too, you know, because uh, they were all everywhere. We started getting more interested in, in world instruments, I guess. And when I, I first showed up at the store, just as a customer, maybe it was early 60s, I saw sitars in here I had never seen before from India and some other exotic instruments, the very first djembes I had ever seen that probably were ever for sale in the United States, the African drum. And then when I started working here, I kind of influenced it more and more to, to go in that direction because I became less and less interested in guitars and guitar stores were opening everywhere and everybody was selling the same things and it was the same thing and the culture became ubiquitous, you know, for a long time. In one way, we only have a few types. There's wind instruments and percussion instruments and string instruments, but how many different instruments, I, I've never really stopped to count, but I would guess there's, you know, maybe a thousand or more. There are certain things that are very uh, useful and valuable that are innate in certain cultures. Like if you take um, certain Indian instruments, for example, uh, there are certain ones that are very useful, uh, very vocal instruments, you know, that uh, people love Jimi Hendrix because he played the electric guitar really vocally, you know and it was the technology that made it possible to do that. But there are other instruments, there are fretless instruments, and so on and so forth. So those were the things that interested me. And now, and now that I've gotten older and I'm making instruments, you know, there are aspects of them which become very useful for making new instruments that we, we do here. So we think that we have a big influence on the future of instruments, just on some of the instruments we've been making here that are unique. I found that now, in the last maybe eight years or so, that there's a, a, 
a real interest in the store just by the fact that it's different from other stores. That was uh, one of the geniuses of uh, the guy who started the store, Jerry, was, you know, he really uh, was very tasteful and interested in new things all the time. And uh, although he had no plan, he was very mutable to these influences. In the last few years, it's just amazing, really, how many people come in and say, oh, this is my favorite store, it's the best store I've been in. Oh, I just got to New York from Copenhagen, and I've never seen a store like this. This is my new favorite store. We get that a lot, so it's nice, but it, it doesn't uh, count for much when you have to pay the bills. <laughs> so, but it's part of it. People come in here and they see a kind of store where we really know about these things, we fix them, we repair them for people, and uh, uh, we have some idea what they're used for, what the culture is, what the ritual and tradition involved in them are, and that's just a different experience. And uh, it's kind of nice. Uh, maybe people feel like that's what they need.